The first talk will be given by Peter Lummig today uh, on verified implementation of IntroSort and PDQ sort. Thank you for the introduction. So um, what's <clears throat> this uh, talk about? So the motivation, the background is we want to verify efficient software. We want to verify software that can somehow compete with unverified implementations, which are usually done in C or C++. So we use some techniques for these. We use stepwise refinement, which gives us a separation of concerns. <clears throat> so we can separate the algorithmic idea from the data structures that we use from, the, from some optimizations to the algorithm. And this allows us to separate the proofs too. If we would to try, if we would try to prove all of these things at once, then we would lose control over the proof. The proof would blow up and become unmanageable. And we use interactive theorem provers because they are very flexible um, and they easily allow us to prove the required background theory. For example, for graph algorithms, we need some elaborate theory about graphs for model checkers. We need some theory on um, <clears throat> temporal logics and so on. So this is why we use interactive theorem provers because they provide enough flexibility to also prove some background theory where completely automated approaches are not yet there. For example, I doubt that um, Ford Falcon theorem for network flows will be found automatically. So <clears throat> we use the Isabel refinement framework this is a tool set for Isabel Hall that supports a stepwise refinement approach. And we have already used this for quite some complex software like model checkers, unsat certifiers, graph algorithms, and some more. So <clears throat> what, this, what the refinement framework does is we start with a specification Isabel Hall, we do stepwise refinement, and at the end, we want to generate something executable. Here, the refinement framework relies on Isabel's code generator. And Isabel's code generator um, by, uh, usually only supports purely functional code. However, purely functional code is slow. Um, there are some inherent problems if we want to get efficient with purely functional code. For example, an array, a very important data structure, just random access um, by indices. In purely functional code, we cannot stay. We cannot uh, use an array. If we want to have random access by some index, we have to use some search tree data structure, which is orders of magnitude slower than just an array. <clears throat> so to this end, <clears throat> with purely functional code, we will never get um, into the um, reach of what we can do with, say, C, C or C++. So the next thing we did is we used imperative hall, which supports um, code generation to a still to a functional programming language, but with imperative features. For example, standard ML has built in arrays. Even Haskell via monads can do arrays. And with this approach, we are already faster. Um, however, the standard ML compiler um, or the Haskell compiler cannot compete with a good C, C++ compiler. So even if we write the same algorithm down in ML, we can expect that it will still be slower than the same algorithm written in C or C++ and translated with a good state-of-the-art C, C++ compiler. That's just because the functional um, compilers, I don't know the exact reasons, they may not be that widely used as C++ compilers, or they may have to make some trade-offs because of the functional um, data. So I don't know the exact reasons. This is an empirical observation that with um, stun, um, with functional language compilers, or the fastest one that I know is Milton for standard ML, and it still does not reach uh, C or C++. So <clears throat> to this end, we have recently developed Isabel LLVM. So Isabel LLVM is a fragment of the LLVM semantics formalized in Isabel HOL, and it supports a code generator from LLVM code to 
uh, from, from Isabel to LLVM code and C header files. So we can generate the LLVM code and we can generate C headers to interface the generated LLVM functions from C or C++. And on the other end, it is integrated with the Isabel refinement framework. So we can use our refinement approach to generate verified LLVM code. And <clears throat> another advantage is it has a slim trusted code base compared to functional language compilers. So for example, the, um, <clears throat> the Haskell compiler has to compile the functional language to some imperative intermediate representation and then do the optimizations on this intermediate uh, representation and translate it to machine code. And when we go directly to an intermediate representation, namely LLVM, we skip this high level step. So we don't have to trust the translation from the high level language to the intermediate language because this is now proven in, inside uh, the theorem prover. And we only have to trust the second layer, namely from intermediate representation to uh, machine code. And LLVM is a widely used compiler. So we can hope that it is well tested and that bugs will um, <clears throat> be discovered soon. So now we can compete with C or C++ implementations because we don't have any, diff any, inherent, <clears throat> in any inherent deficit of speed caused by the compiler anymore. However, um, a purely imperative language like LLVM has less features. So we don't have algebraic data types. We don't have polymorphism. We even don't, it even does not come with an arbitrary precision integer library. So that means to go down to this LLVM code to this intermediate representation, we need to do more complex refinements. We need to uh, do refinements to get rid of algebraic data type, to get rid of polymorphism. We can only use bounded integers. However, the, if for a given algorithm, the higher level refinement steps can typically be reused. So we can reuse much of the proof we already have, but then at the end of this proof, we have to add a few more refinement steps to go down to the more primitive uh, LLVM uh, features that we have. Okay, so <clears throat> this was a broad introduction. So what's this paper about? So this paper is about a case study, how fast can we get? So we choose some algorithms. Um, we chose um, generic sorting algorithms and generic sorting algorithms somehow represent a sweet spot. So on one hand, they have very sophisticated and highly optimized state-of-the-art implementations. And we choose the intro sort implementation from the GNU standard C++ library and the PDQ sort implementation from the boost libraries. And on the other hand, they are not overly complicated. So they still have interesting features. They are interesting algorithms. They have low level optimizations, but they're not overly complicated. So we can hope, <clears throat> we can hope to get some nice results um, with not too much effort. <clears throat> so we use the Isabel refinement framework to separate the um, optimizations from the algorithmic ideas. And another um, nice thing about that is once we have verified the sorting algorithms, we can use them as building blocks for other verification. So once we have verified them in another verification, we just can say, okay, sort an array, we can use our intro sort or PDQ sort for that. And we don't care about how it is implemented. We can just use, um, refine a specification of a sorting algorithm by intro sort or PDQ sort. So this easily integrates in um, more complex verification as a library. And finally, we have succeeded um, with our uh, study, how fast can we get? So our algorithms will are as, um, are as fast as their unverified counterparts from C++. We have verified that on an extensive set of benchmarks. Okay, so what's the intro sort algorithm about? <clears throat> so it's well known that quick sort is in practice the fastest sorting algorithm, unless for some corner cases where it gets quadratic. So the idea of the intro sort algorithm 
is to combine quicksort and heap sort to get the best of both worlds and get a practically fast n log n algorithm. <clears throat> and the idea is um, when the recursion depth for quicksort gets too deep, we switch to heap sort. So this is the standard quicksort scheme here. Uh, you see, um, we sort the array between L and H. We partition it and we recursively call um, quicksort. <clears throat> and we count the recursion depths. This D counts the recursion depths. And if the recursion depths gets deeper than some logarithmic of the array size, we sort the partition with heap sort. And this gives us an n log n algorithm. But in most cases, this won't happen and we are as efficient as quicksort. And another optimization that seems to be standard in real world quicksort implementations is to use an insertion sort for small partitions. So this implementation here is what the GNU C++ library does. It stops the quicksort scheme when the partition gets lower than a certain threshold and then in a second step runs an insertion sort over this array that is almost sorted. So after this, um, into sort aux, all elements are at most threshold positions away from their sorted positions, and then insertion sort is fast. Okay, <clears throat> so how do we verify this? <clears throat> so one important thing both for implementation and verification is modularity. So we prove um, specifications for subroutines, and in the algorithm that uses the subroutines, we only use the specification. So for example, um, heap sort, well, what, what do we need to know about heap sort at this position? Well, we need to, the only thing we need to know is it sorts the array. And if we want to verify runtime, we need to know it sorts the array in n log n. But we don't need to know any details about heap sort here. So when we prove this algorithm correct, we will only use this fact, heap sort implements sorting spe specification. And that's all we need to know about heap sort at this point. And this um, is independent of how heap sort is implemented in detail. So this is an important thing. And it's the same, same thing why you use procedures in programs. Um, we also, um, the same principle also applies for the proofs. So here are some of the specifications we use. For example, partitioning we allow any non-trivial partitioning. So this is a partitioning, which means um, the set of the elements is the same. Um, the first partition is smaller than the second partition and the partition is non-trivial. So none of the two partitions is empty. And we have this assumption here. So this is a precondition, which means the array must be greater than or equal to four. And this is because of <clears throat> how we want to implement it. We want to implement this by a median of three or by a ninther procedure. And there we would just have to do some odd corner cases if this would not be the case. But as our threshold is greater than four anyway, these corner cases do not apply. And we simply edit this as a precondition to avoid corner having to check for useless corner cases in the implementation. Um, another one is our partially sorted specification. Um, so this is a sorted up to a threshold. That is what our intro sort aux algorithm guarantees. So the first phase of our intro sort. And I won't go into detail here. The specification is a bit more complicated as you can see. Okay. Um, <clears throat> another important methodology is refinement. So for example, um, we start with lists so we start with an intro sort formalization that sorts the whole list XS. It does not have these parameters L and H. Then we refine it. So we prove this correct. Then we refine this in another step to slices of lists. So here we consider the slice of the list from index L to index H. And this is one refinement step. And we don't need to show that the whole algorithm is correct. We only need to show that this new implementation does the same as this old implementation. Not interested that this is actually a sorting algorithm. We just have to show that the indexing, indexing of the list is shifted correctly. And finally, we take this algorithm and replace the lists by arrays and the indices 
which are natural numbers here, are replaced by 64-bit integers. And this is again a proof which is done mostly automatically by a tool of the refinement framework. And once we have done all these steps, by transitivity, we get that our implementation implements the specification. Here the specification is modified by this transition to slices. So the specification is something that says the um, slice from L to H is sorted up to threshold. <clears throat> and the important thing is once we have done all this, um, all these internal steps and this refinement step via um, whole lists and then to slices get irrelevant. The only thing we need to know is this lemma. We can implement um, the partial sorted uh, specification on a slice by this implementation. And we never look again into this. So when we use this um, algorithm in a, a bigger context, for example, in the intro sort algorithm, we only use this lemma and we don't care about these internals anymore. So this is how refinement makes the proof modular by separation of concerns. Okay, <clears throat> next I want to uh, quickly um, show one, some of the low level optimizations that um, are found in the C++ implementation and that I had to, um, that I had to verify too. Um, so, I use the example of the insert procedure. So the insert procedure is the main procedure, main work, workhorse of insertion sort. So the um, thing is the element at index i should be moved leftwards until its position in a sorted list. And L is a lower bound of this list. So there is one special case, namely what happens if this element has to go to the first position of the list. Well, then we would get an underflow here and we would check the element before position L, which might be wrong because there might be no element. But in many cases, for example, if you have already partially sorted the array, we know that beyond L, left of L, there will be a smaller element. So, there is a valid element. In most cases, we call this procedure, there actually is a valid element below L that is smaller than the element at I. So we don't need this comparison at all. We know that this comparison will uh, also uh, be defined and hit once we go beyond L. So this is the first optimization. It's called unguarded insertion sort. Um, and we, um, formalized it by controlling the, um, this comparison by a flag G. And this way we could verify the same algorithm. We use most of the verification for this algorithm with a side condition on G. And only in the last step, when it comes to generating LLVM code, we specialize this algorithm for G equals true and false. And in the case of um, G equals false, we can get rid of this guarding condition, which is one comparison less in the most inner loop of the sorting algorithm, which is a considerably measurable speed up. Another <clears throat> optimization that you can see here is that um, usually you represent uh, these algorithms by a swap. So usually you would swap the element i with the element i minus one. However, in this loop, one side of the swap, namely the move to i minus one, will get overwritten in the next iteration anyway. So that's one read and one write too much. So we can replace the swap by a move. So this is only a move. And we have to move the last element to its position only after the loop. This also gives a measurable speed up. And for this insert procedure, we implemented it directly. So we had slightly more complicated invariants, um, but uh, implemented this directly. However, the same applies for the sift down procedure of heap sort, which is more complicated. And here it actually makes sense to first do a version with a swap here and then do a refinement step to a move. And that's how we did it for sift down, which again split these two aspects of the algorithm, namely the 
how does sift down uh, restore the heap property and the swap optimization. We could prove these two things separately, which made the proof smaller. Okay, and the last one is a manual tail recursion optimization. Um, so the second call to quicksort, the second recursive call to quicksort or introsort aux, as it is called here, is tail recursive. And the C++ implementation does a manual tail recursion optimization here, manually replacing it by a loop. However, we found that the LLVM optimizer is smart enough to do that for us. So we did not have to implement that in, um, in our formalization because LLVM did it automatically. Okay, so we also have verified PDQ sort. Um, the only thing you should take away from this slide is PDQ sort is much more complicated. It uses the same scheme as intro sort, but differs in some details. However, the verification went mostly smoothly. Um, we could reuse a heap sort and parts of insertion sort. And having learned our lessons from the intro sort verification, we could use, we use slightly more coarse grained refinement steps. So we summarized a few of the fine grained refinement steps because that's an engineering trade off. If you can summarize two refinement steps, the proofs get a bit more complex but the boilerplate of having two refinement steps or one gets less. So this is the engineering trade-off here. Um, and there was a problem with inbound proofs of Isabel simplifier that we could fortunately solve. Okay, now to the benchmarks. So we have run <clears throat> um, our algorithms. Um, again, we have benchmarked our implementation against the, the new um, the C++ implementations. Um, that come from the GNU standard library and from the boost library. Um, we use integers and strings. Um, and the red bars is the runtime of Isabel of the verified algorithm. The blue bar is the runtime of the unverified algorithm from the C++ library. And you see, we are pretty close together. Sometimes we are even faster. Sometimes the other one is faster, but in general, we are pretty, pretty close together. The same for PDQ sort on integers and the same picture for strings for both algorithms. And this was, this were the benchmarks on an Intel processor. I could also have shown you the ones on an AMD processor because they look a bit more for, favorable for us. So I don't know why, but it seems that our algorithm is one or 2% faster than the boost library consistently for all benchmarks. You see, there is consistently, we are a slight bit faster. So all in, um, all in all, I would say we have achieved our goal. How fast can we get? The answer is as fast as the best state-of-the-art implementations known if we invest enough work to verify them. So there's no trade-off, there's, there's no uh, inherent deficit posed by the compiler uh, for, to a functional language anymore for verified algorithms. Okay, so in the paper, you can find some more, um, some more things. So the sorting of strings uh, requires some separation logic tricks because the ownership of the string has to be somehow shared by the array and the compare function that wants to compare two strings. So we used an approach of borrowing similar to what you can do in say Rust. Um, and <clears throat> sometimes you have to sort with a parameterized comparison function. So for example, um, an element I should be less than an element J if the some stored property of these elements uh, compare um, for some array A. And this posed an engineering challenge how to get these strange comparison function that involves another array into the algorithm. And fortunately, using refinement, we could introduce this parameter at a very late stage, preserving most of the abstract proofs and only having to change the uh, concrete proofs. Okay, so to come to the conclusion, um, we have verified state-of-the-art sorting algorithms using the Isabel refinement framework with the LLVM backend. Um, we are as fast as a 
state-of-the-art implementations of those algorithms taken from the GNU standard library and the Boost library, which are very well known, highly elaborate uh, libraries. Um, the whole thing took us about 9,000 lines of proof text and 130 person hours of work. And future work includes um, some obvious work on more sorting algorithms and more features of sorting algorithms, but also some work on verification engineering. So analogous to software engineering, we have one goal, correctness, that cannot be changed. But then we have other goals like efficiency, that was what that paper is about, but we also have scalability, adaptability, so how fast can we change an algorithm, reusability, can we reuse the algorithms for other work and other formalizations, development cost and effort, so can we have, do we have enough time, uh, do we have, and so on. So all the things uh, that, that make software engineering also apply to um, engineering provably correct algorithms. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot for the talk. So we already have one question by Rene Thiemann. I can't uh, see the questions, unfortunately. He asks, can you import external LLVM code to verify it instead of doing it, doing code generation? No. Um, the, um, may, may, maybe we could, but the whole framework is not engineered for this direction. The whole framework, so we focus on a small fragment of LLVM that's just enough to export the code that we have in Isabel. And we don't support any more features of LLVM. So this, would, um, this is not what the uh, framework is engineered for. The framework is engineered for this uh, top-down top approach, coming from a high-level language going to LLVM, not the other way around. OK, thank you, Peter. Then Joshua Schneider has a question. Yes, uh, thank you for the talk. Um, I was wondering. Um, how one would go about the memory management for more complicated data structures than arrays. So in the end, you mentioned some separation logic and the borrowing approach, but does your framework uh, provide some, some help if one has to do more complicated memory management? <clears throat> so the, um, the framework has two layers. One layer is a standard separation logic, whole logic, um, with a verification condition generator, that's a low level layer. On this, you can do um, most, of, most of elaborate data structures investing um, considerably amount of work. And it has a second layer <coughs> that tries to automatically, um, to automatically go from a functional um, program to, a, um, to an imperative program. Um, and this only supports um, quite simple memory management aspects. So um, it's, it's similar, um, <clears throat> it just tries to um, do a static memory management similar to what Rust does, but right now a bit less uh, sophisticated than Rust. Okay, that sounds very interesting, thank you. And we have yet another question from Dmitri. Try to. Yeah, thanks a lot for the talk. This is great work as usual. Um, my question is about the design overall. Uh, so you want to compute with C, C++ implementations. For that, you could go to C, C++, Rust, as opposed to a more low level language, I assume, uh, at least in terms of efficiency. So can you comment on that? Why did you choose to go to a more low level language in the end? So for this approach, as lower level the language, as smaller the trusted code base is, which in particular for C++ or C, which has a um, really, really complicated semantics um, is a big plus. So we, can, we could go through C, C++, but then we would have to formalize at least a fragment of the notoriously complicated and intricate and subtle C or C++ semantics in order to be correct. Here, we can go down to LLVM. We don't get any advantages from going to C++. Um, the only thing for LLVM we have to do is uh, we don't have structured control flow, but have a control flow graph. 
um, and we don't get, gain any other advantage from the high level constructs in C++ or C, sorry, in C. In C++, we might try to formalize templates and so on. But in C, we don't or get- data types, map data types easily. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but we don't get any advantage here. The, the, but the only advantage we get if we go to the law level is we have a very pretty simple semantics. So the semantic mm -hmm. of LLVM compared to the very subtle semantics of C++ or C is very simple. So we can formalize it and tr hopefully trust the formalization. Makes sense, thanks. So uh, Tobias, time for one last quick question. Yes, just uh, the, Peter, you said the simplifier choked because of arithmetic. So it, uh, what exactly happened there? Can you say a bit more? Um, I'm not completely sure. So I had lots of, um, I had, lo had lots of inequalities, A less than B. So A less than two to the power of 64 and so on. And I had lots of them in it. And a few additions, A plus B less than uh, two to the power of something or A minus one less than. And I'm, I got this uh, arid split limit exceeded uh, messages a lot and the simplification time just, uh, so it just took minutes to simplify such a goal. And once I just, what I did is I, <clears throat> I hid. I no, hid no, I understand what you did and uh, thank you for the symptoms. <clears throat> I think I know what's going on. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Um, so we're already out of time. So any further question, please direct them to Peter directly. Um, thanks again, Peter, for the great talk.